Hello everybody, my name is Nokwanda Makonga and most people call me Nox. I am a medicinal plant scientist and I work in the botany and zoology department at Stellenbosch University. Today I will be talking about the South African botanical treasures for human health. South Africa is well known for its biodiversity hotspots and it is home to three different biodiversity hotspots. So what are biodiversity hotspots? Biodiversity hotspots are places where there is large amounts of biodiversity that may be under threat. In South Africa, we have many different and unique landscapes. And this is thought to be amongst the key drivers of the floral diversification in the country. In places like the Cape Floristic region, where you have proteas and restios and ericas largely having radiated throughout time, it is thought and hypothesized that these unique landscapes, the climate, the pollination syndromes that exist in these areas have driven this floral diversification. In places like Namaqualand, you will meet some very unique plants, including the quiver tree. The quiver tree is actually named after the way in which the San actually used it. They used to carve out the branches and use this for quivers that were actually used as part of their bow and arrow. Many of the plants that we have here in South Africa have adapted to their unique ecological environments. Take this pelagonium, for example. This particular species is found in the Namakwa land. It actually happens to be called a ding stengel malfa. It has thick stems and succulent leaves that have facilitated it to be able to exist in dry and harsh environments that often do not have water that are exposed to high light intensities. And these unique plants are often very important to their people. So what about South Africa's people and how do they use medicinal plants? I'm going to give a few statistics right now. 70% or so of the population of South Africans is reliant on medicinal plants for their health care purposes. About 4,000 to 5,000 plant species are important for health purposes in South Africa. The combination of plant biodiversity together with biocultural diversity is critical in building the different indigenous knowledge systems that actually exist in South Africa. And this forms an inspiration for medicinal plant scientists like myself, as it creates a very unique ethnopharmacopoeia, which is explored for the bioeconomy of South Africa in the natural products industry. Plants such as Pelagonium sedoides, for example, are utilized to manufacture an extract that is now traveling throughout the whole entire world that is used for respiratory infections. This reminds me of the words of George Washington Carver, who happened to be a black botanist that was very prominent in America during the early 20th century. And he said, the secrets are in the plants. To elicit them, you have to love them enough. And yes, I have my special plants that I absolutely adore. And now I am going to introduce you to some of these. First up is a global trotter. And this happens to be Dodonea viscosa. This particular species is found in many different parts of the world. It is found in China. It is found in India. It is thought to have originated from Australia. 
And here in Africa, it is found in Kenya and including the southern tip. And this particular species has got an anti-cancer agent. And that is now important for potentially commercializing this particular plant. I introduce you to a plant that comes from the succulent Karoo, which I have right here. This particular plant has been utilized by the koi and the sand for many generations. It has an anti-anxiety agent and is being commercialized for its antidepressant effects. The work that we have done in our environment has shown that the key metabolites that are known as mesembryed alkaloids are produced according to season. Last but not least, Sutherlandia frutescens, a plant that is so easy to see in the wild because of its bright red flowers. This particular species, known as Kankerbos in Afrikaans, has been utilized for many generations to treat different kinds of cancers. It is also an immune modulatory agent and the work that we have done in our environments to try and understand its cellular metabolism has revealed a few secrets. When this plant is under stress, it changes the way in which it functions, changing its metabolic activity and its biosynthesis, and sometimes lowering those amino acids which are important as immunomodulatory agents. Why is this work of significance? Where many people are reliant on the biodiversity, and when that biodiversity might be under threat as a result of climate change, it becomes really important to understand the cellular mechanisms that drive the production of the health beneficiating compounds. And this brings me to the last part where I'm thinking about the words of the koi and the sand. And here I quote, you can't sow seeds of discord and expect to harvest different. You will always reap what you have sown. And that is the law of the universe. It becomes really important, ladies and gentlemen, to think about the drivers of extinction in terms of our biological diversity. And these happen to be climate change, urban developments, agricultural expansions. And if we want the outcomes to be different for future generations, we have to think about our practice today. Thank you.